Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 530. Very scary and dangerous situations, um, but they do happen. A toddler is home safe after Moorhead City workers found him wandering around by himself near a busy street. Thank you for joining us tonight. It took police over an hour to locate the person who was supposed to be watching a two-year-old. The child was found in just a diaper, a t-shirt, and without any shoes. City workers spotted him in Moorhead along 11th Street North near Crystal Sugar and called police. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson has this story. It was along this stretch of road. A two-year-old, alone, in a diaper, with no shoes, asking where his mommy and daddy are. City employees actually found this very young boy walking in his diaper on 11th Street North and realized the dangers of that and called us and stayed with this child. Thankfully, the child is okay. Police had to search the area with a picture asking where he belongs. The person watching the toddler fell asleep according to police. Yeah, it's kind of a scary deal. A couple streets away, Matt Rarick's wife runs a home daycare where they put safety first. Oh, I can see where a kid could get away. I mean, you know, that would happen, but if it's your job to watch them, you should probably be watching them, wouldn't you think? Well, this is another example of how those little two and a half year olds can find their way outside if they're not watched really close. Lieutenant Tori Jacobson with the Moorhead Police Department says it's a good reminder for the community. These little children that wake up sometimes ahead of the people that are supposed to be watching them or maybe if they're busy cooking or turn their back, they can find a door and they can get out. It's very scary and, and fortunately we have people like these two city employees that uh, took the initiative and, and made sure that this child stayed safe. Thankfully, the two-year-old wandering on this street is home now. Things could have gone much worse. I'd be heartbroken to see that. I think anybody would. In Moorhead, Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. A report has been filed with social services about the incident. They will be following up. This was a scene on University Drive around 1 p.m. today. A crash involving four cars. Police say the first three vehicles stopped at the red light and the driver of the fourth car was reaching for an item that fell on the floor and then rear ended the third car, causing a four car pile up. Now, luckily, no one was injured, but police say this accident is just another reminder to watch the road. Keep your eyes on the road as you're driving. You remember you're moving a 3,000 to 4,000 pound vehicle through the road. and It can hurt somebody if you hit somebody with it. The driver of the fourth car was cited for failing to have the vehicle under control. The valley sure got some sun today, and it wasn't too hot out there either. Let's send it over to meteorologist Robert Hahn for a first look at those temps. Robert? Yeah, just about a perfect day out there. Lots of sunshine, some light winds, temperatures in the 70s and 80s, and some lower humidity out there. Temperatures right now 81 in Fargo, Grand Forks, Wapiton, Gwinter, and Jamestown, 77 in Langdon. Also 77 in the Valley City area. Winds, they're light. They're going to remain light as we hit through the rest of this evening, becoming rather light to calm overnight tonight in a few areas. Once again, could see some patchy fog during the overnight hours. Just a few clouds out there, primarily in our western counties, and that's all we're going to see as we hit through the overnight hours. And underneath what few clouds we have, no precipitation out there. However, our far western counties might see an isolated shower or storm very late tonight, early tomorrow morning. But here in Fargo, we stay dry, hardly a cloud around. Temperatures dipping down to the low 70s by 8 into the upper 60s by 9. Another cool night tonight, and if you're out late, take an eye to the uh, north. Could see those northern lights. We'll have more on your forecast, including a look at that 7-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Robert. Mm -hmm. And as a reminder, you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Search VNL Weather in the App Store. The National Weather Service has confirmed that a tornado did touch down in Norman County, Minnesota on Sunday. Here's video of some of the damage in Gary, Minnesota. Roofs were blown off, homes and several trees were knocked over. That tornado was a level EF2 and had winds up to 115 miles per hour. And speaking of tornadoes, the Weather Service has also confirmed that a tornado ripped through Hillsborough over the weekend. And that one was an EF3 with winds up to 140 miles per hour. And it was a bit of a mess today at the Johnny e. Carlson Coliseum in Fargo. 
Take a look at this. It's video of a massive water leak between the gate valve and the water meter inside the Coliseum. Water and soil covered the area of rink, concession stand, bathrooms, and offices in the lobby area. The cleanup process is estimated to take two weeks, and at this time, Park District officials do not believe this will affect the scheduled opening date of the indoor ice season, which begins on October 30th. Researchers at the University of North Dakota have landed a $1 million grant that could one day have a major impact on global warming in the state's energy industry. They are collaborating with the Chinese on creating clean, burning coal-fired power plants, plants that do not emit CO2, carbon dioxide, the gas blamed for creating global warming. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what could one day be earth-changing research that's taking place right here in the Valley. One-third of all electricity in the United States is generated by coal-fired power plants like this one in western North Dakota. And since China has vast coal reserves, they've also been building these type of power plants at a staggering rate to keep up with their economy. About four years ago, uh, the U.S. was the largest emitter of carbon dioxide in the world. China went screaming past us, and then they now emit almost twice as much as we do. So any effort to reduce global climate change has to involve China. UND researchers are now working on technology that will separate pure oxygen from the incoming air into power plants. It's used to burn the coal, which then produces an exhaust of almost pure CO2 that can be captured. Overall goal of this is to get rid of the CO2 emitted from coal-fired power plants. Yes, to uh, capture the CO2 in as pure a form as possible so that it can uh, readily be compressed and uh, sequestered. And if you get this working wonderfully, that could take care of a great big world problem. Oh yes, it's a, it's a very exciting uh, avenue for us to uh, go towards. UND researchers will be collaborating with the Chinese and other universities to bring this technology out of the laboratory into commercial use that could turn the world's vast coal reserves into clean electrical energy. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. UND received the four-year, $1 million grant from the National Science Foundations of China in the United States. Much of the money will be used to pay graduate students and others who are conducting the research. The city of Minneapolis over the weekend hoped to curb violent street crime through a gun buyback program. The program encouraged gun owners to turn in their weapons anonymously in exchange for Visa gift cards. Well, some of what the program received, however, looked a lot like this. One gun owner submitted what appears to be a pipe attached to a slab of wood that says legal shotgun 12 gauge and then quote gun buybacks don't work. The anonymous gun owner received $200 in gift cards. The Minneapolis Star Tribune reports $25,000 in gift cards were given out. Some people that received the gift cards said they would use them to buy new firearms. Today, President Obama reduced the prison sentences of more than 100 people convicted of drug crimes. It's the second largest batch of commutations this month. The president has now shortened the sentences of 673 Americans. Obama's top lawyer said today to remember these people are sons, daughters, parents, and in many cases, grandparents who have taken steps toward rehabilitation. More than one third of Obama's clemency recipients had been serving life sentences. The presidential race appears to be narrowing according, according to the latest NBC Survey Monkey National Poll. Clinton now has a six point lead over Trump. Clinton now has 48% support, while Trump holds steady with 42%. Last week, Clinton led Trump by eight points in a four way general election matchup. Clinton leads with 41% to Trump's 37%. Libertarian Gary Johnson maintains 11% of the vote, and Green Party candidate Jill Stein. Hold steady with 5%. The Minnesota Vikings practice was abruptly canceled today after quarterback Teddy Bridgewater went down with what head coach Mike Zimmer says he fears may be a season ending injury. Bridgewater suffered the injury about 25 minutes into practice during a non contact play. Reports say Bridgewater was seen clutching his knee as he went down, and media was quick, quickly removed from the field as coaches canceled practice. Bridgewater was rushed to the hospital in an ambulance, and Zimmer told media he was sedated and headed for an MRI. Sports director Beth Hull will have much more on this on Valley News Live at 6. 
Beer lovers in Fargo will soon have another place to stop on a night out. It's called Fargo Brewing Ale House, and it's located off 17th Avenue South in Fargo. The new location will feature 14 Fargo Brewing Company beers on tap, plus, of course, root beer. Also, a limited food menu is available. Fargo Brewing Ale House will be opening this Friday from 5 until midnight. You may not expect to get that fresh taste of sea of the sea in a landlocked state of North Dakota, but a new seafood market and restaurant is now open. It's called Deep Blue Seafood, and you'll find it at 23rd Avenue South in a strip mall off of 45th Street. Everything from king crab legs to oysters and scallops are ready for families to pick up. Owners say they wanted to give people a taste of something they may have never tried. We want to expose people in Fargo, I and mean, most people are, are familiar with uh, tuna and salmon and tilapia and stuff like that, and that's, that's their overall idea of seafood. But we bring in some really diverse items that most people haven't had a chance to try. And um, from the feedback we've got from, from uh, lots of folks that come through the door, it's really being well received. For more on Deep Blue Seafood, go to valleynewslive.com and click on our hot button for a link to their Facebook page. And one man is thanking Fargo police for all that they do once again. Nick Barth is known for standing outside the downtown station holding signs for support. And this time, it's to thank a soon-to-be retiree, Lieutenant Joel Vettel. Well, Lieutenant Vettel has been great to me being out here, and so has the rest of the Fargo Police Department. So I just want to keep coming out here and show my support to them. Tomorrow is Lieutenant Joel Vettel's last day with Fargo Police after 18 years on the force. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook so you can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. Still ahead tonight, Fitbit has unveiled a new fitness tracker for swimmers. Find out how it's helping track your laps. Some big time storms ongoing in parts of central South Dakota, but for us, the quiet weather will continue over the next few days. But We've got our own storm chance to talk about on that seven-day forecast. We'll get to that right after this.